It is by caffeine alone I set my mind in motion. It is by the beans of Java the thoughts acquire speed, the hands acquire shaking, the shaking becomes a warning. It is by caffeine alone I set my mind in motion. Welcome to our Thursday night typical stream. This is Table Breakers, and uh, we have tabled the discussion for poisons and potions for the moment because there's some more data that must be acquired, and that way people can have outrage. And then... We had another most important topic to discuss. Yes, the skyships of Arania. Arinaria. Thank you. Arinaria. Arinaria. The skyships of Arinaria Prima. Or if you're Patrick Stewart, the skyships of Arinaria Prima. Boy, that was really terrible. Hi, my that name is Bruce. Horrible. So. We are playing with coffee beans, and while oh. I put these in, no, no, the, this is his now his his only beans account. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't knock it till you try it. Okay, you know, four kids from uh, was it? Uh, where do you get your coffee from, there, Bruce? I am very serious. Why is, might as well just plug this in right now. This is a finely crafted set of beans from Blackout Coffee Company. Made out of Southern Florida, Blackout Coffee Company is a very, very big arbiter of the First and Second and all other amendments in the Bill of Rights. And they are very pro-America. I get my wonderful beans from these people. This particular brand is called Fowler's Makery and Mischief. It's a medium roast. It's got a little bit of a caramely taste to it. And whenever you brew it, it is a joy. You will be brought to order. It is time to make money. Go time is now. So that is Blackout Coffee. And we will get some links in the chat. So if you would like to procure some Blackout Coffee, you can go with either Barron's or my link. I believe they give you about the same amount, like 10% off. Um, yeah. Sign up. Sign up. Sign up, sign up for Blackout Coffee to go in your email and your text messages because you will get deals that we cannot provide, but they can, and their stuff is amazing. You grind your beans. Don't get grounds, in my opinion. Go for the beans. Grind them up. That way you get the two hits. You get that smell whenever you first pop open the grinder, and then you get it again whenever you start drinking the wonderful juice. Thank you, Baron. Thank you, Cigar DM. On with the show. Baron. Yeah. How are you doing tonight, sir? Yeah, I'm alive. Alive? Okay. In the middle there, top row, we got the crafting gamer. Sir, how are you doing? Pretty good. Fantastic. Wish my camera was working. We're <laughs> glad it's not. I mean, that's horrible. That whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. You know what? It's way early, but we can still do this. We can still <laughs> do this. <laughs> Oh. Connell, stop. <laughs> really? <laughs> I haven't had enough coffee today. I, I might have to, you know, you, take advantage of those. I, I wonder. Let me, you don't let me drink see. coffee. Who are you kidding? That's right, but they also sell tea. They sell tea and they sell wonderful cocoa as well. So Cocoa's no matter what, Yeah. Uh, Blaine, how, how, big, how big of a cocoa fan are you as your household? Pretty high. Okay. Yeah, Blackout Coffee's fantastic. So go ahead, and we'll get the link in the chat there. While I'm doing that, Cigar DM, how have you been, sir? I'm doing all right. Could always do better. Here's the Biogaster. Well, Biogaster, welcome. Iron Caster! So, yeah, no, he's, this a, is... uh, he, he's a model. He's a what? He paints models. He does what, what we do. Oh, because all, all I heard is he played Moodle. And, and you oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that, that's, what the fuck is this uh, shit? How, Gorbachev, how, the curse of Gorbachev is hit. Fuck. <laughs> I can't think of that. What I can't think of the show, but there was always a chasing scene. I'm not talking about Scooby Doo with the music. The uh, God, church, not church. Benny Hill. 
I need to get the Benny Hill soundtrack. So when I have my Velociraptor chasing my wheelchair person, I can have that playing in the background. It's called it's called Yaki Sax. Yeah. Nah, I'm probably going to go to hell. Okay, so so the, uh, the what we're talking to, about tonight is actually a game that we are going for the next three weeks. Starting next week, this is something the Crafty, Crafting Gamer has been writing. And uh, he is going to give us a little primer, a little idea of the world, what uh, we're looking at, how things work, and how we're going to break. I mean, uh, how uh, how we're going to survive. Yeah, survive, not break things. We don't. We don't break things. No, no. no. <laughs> How many dice yeah. can you roll in your exalted game? All of them. <laughs> I ran out of dice. Me and a team it mixer. <laughs> I'm borrowing yours. I'm out of dice. Uh, Blaine, how have you been? I'm doing all right. Good deal. You set for Saturday night's uh, discussion. Whatever it is, sure. I'll let it be your choice if uh, you want to go with uh, game discussion or gameology talk and discuss like crafting magic or uh, better at laying down a, 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 some some finer points because I'm still working on the rule system for what I've got for the magic, but uh, I'd be more than happy to pick your brain about things and you've got a good mind about it. So if you want to start with that, then we pick on some things in Discord. We could do that or we could just go to Discord. It doesn't matter. Sir. Or, 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 or hold up that book, that book that you were showing us earlier. Oh, oh the, the, the holy book. That one? Our Brutal Brutal Legend, the, the tabletop RPG. This one? This one. Yes. It's cool. I like it. Give, give us a preview. Give us a preview. I told you there was a Jack Black I, I, I took me a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. You know it's tribute. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's good. It's fun. It's great. I mean, where else do you get to have, you know, Nathan Explosion riding a, uh, riding a metal unicorn into a picture? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so, TCG. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, give us give us the the world. What world are we going to be going into, and what kind of things are we going to be doing? Arenaria is a world that is so old that there is generations of uh, like uh, civilization based generations that have been long since forgotten. There are ancient temples and locations that if you find them. Nobody has any knowledge what they were meant for or anything because it's so old. Nobody has a clue. I mean, like, we know Mesopotamia. Well, I'm talking things so old we can't even name it in the game. And that's just the main basis of, like, of – no, that's the that's part of the base. Sorry. Uh, I'm getting theme. a little excited. Yeah, part of the theme. I'm getting a little excited. But the main yeah. theme is the fact that there are six primary cultures under six different colored suns. Green, red, blue, purple, yellow, and silver. There are four, uh, four primary cultures that determine most of what happens within the world. Because the uh, green nation has virtually no ability to leave their home because their ships can't go very far. And the silver nation has absolutely no interest in the world. So it, t it tends to be just those four. Uh, the red, blue, purple, and uh, yellow do the primary world uh, control, basically. And But the world is so vast, it's, the world is literally the size of Jupiter, that their territories are extremely limited by comparison. Most of the world is just an open book to people can do whatever they want. Did, did, okay. And so the reason why... I, I'm I'm not going to try to bust your balls here, but it's going to come off like that. So I mean, <laughs> be adults here. Um, okay. Frog God Games has a campaign world called Lulligar or the Lost Lands, and they've been putting material and content for that for the past 
six years pretty pretty heavily out there. Um, the reason why I'm asking you about this is because their world and their main book describes it as being the size of Jupiter, and they've detailed one continent, one singular continent, and then they said pretty much the rest of the world is yours to fuck with. So were you inspired by that, or is this just something you've heard for the first time? Uh, this is something I've heard for the first time. I was inspired okay. by a video game called Skies of Arcadia. Not familiar with that one. Uh, it's a freaking great game. Uh huh. Do you have experience with this shadow? Oh hell yeah! I still have it. And mm -hmm. and the strategy guide. Is it a PC game or a console game? Console. Uh, PlayStation. You can find 2, it on the I PC think? now. I started on the Dreamcast actually. Oh yeah, that's right. I had that there too. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's basically like spelljammer ships that aren't spelljammer ships, but they're sailing ships. They fly. You've got a party of characters. You've got the ship, and you you go on a big long ass you know RPG adventure. Okay. And as you do so, your ship gets you know you you can upgrade the ship and get more cannons and you know blast more shit. And uh, the only thing I didn't like about it, remember remember that freaking cloud bank area that you had to go in oh yeah there's like a couple of those oh god i freaking hated that i finally figured it out but it was just it was freaking so aggravating yeah yeah no not that but you just you flew into this giant cloud bank and you couldn't figure out you know north south east or west to save your life you just had to fuck around with the controller until you finally made it out the other side Oh yeah, the the super uh, the uh, the super cloud reef beneath the only area in the game that had no sun or no moon. I should say. Yeah, I, I used yeah, sun. it was it was brutal. It was brutal. It was one of those I almost rage quit the game kind of things, but the game was too good, so I just I figured it out. And this was way before yeah. you could go online and and get any sort of clues. I think. Yeah, I, if there was, I didn't have access to it. Around the same time, you'd have to call Sega on the phone to get hints. I remember that era. <laughs> yeah, it was... 1-900. One, one what, what did I just buy my kid? Yeah, uh... What? That's that's why I play Nintendo because I always got Nintendo Power. Yeah, wow. that's yeah. that's where they had all that stuff in. Yeah. Did you have the Power Glove? I did. I had. I did not have the Power Glove, but I had the little robot that didn't want to work. So bad. We made it. Gyro Might is what it was for, and we made it into a two-player game. One of us controlled the guy; the other one controlled the uh, the pipes that would open and close. It was kind of fun that way. <laughs> and uh the main basis i'm making for my game i don't think i'm going to have an overall like here's the uh storyline and here's the adventure that you have to have and I'm, I'm gonna do it a little more palladium style where here's a bunch of adventures you could have but most of it's pretty open world there will be a i will have a uh in a future book, like an adventure, I do intend to have a venture book where here's an adventure I could think you could have. But like a lot of games that I do know you could have an overall adventure. In, an, the arc of an adventure built directly into the book for this huge campaign, I don't intend to do that. Sorry, I'm getting kind of excited. And my words are stumbling over themselves. It's okay. It's okay. I'd rather you be excited about your system than not give a shit. All right, so 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 give us some some more background about the characters that live in this uh well pirate uh the term well pirates and say the most common uh, character you'll find out there is not a derogatory is not a derogatory it is not directly meant as a criminal term it is meant as a derogatory term for mercenary because you're basically a 
Oh, good example is how uh, Ronin is viewed in Japan. A dog without a master. And which leads to a lot of pirates doing piracy. I mean, I might as well at that point. So it, I've thought about this, but I don't know how to explain it because I've hmm. within the six cult, within the four primary nations, you have the um, the red nation that specializes in uh, ancient tradition and steam. They tend to be found a lot in uh, a lot in. They tend to be found with a lot of uh, Arabic and Middle Eastern type cultures because they're the desert people. And, uh, blue, I made very Oriental. Like, admittedly, it's kind of almost stolen directly from Skies of Arcadia, but it fits perfectly. Uh, they're mostly wind powered. You'll you'll find a lot of industrialism in their in their uh, cities, but mostly wind powered and still a lot of handmade crafts. Beneath the purple moon, it is almost nothing but magical base. Like they use refractions. That's the name of the magic in everything. Literally everything. There, there is nothing that doesn't have a some some aspect of magic in it. And then there is the yellow uh, people beneath the yellow sun, which is highly industrial, highly electrolyzed. They are the with. They also have the most advanced ships with having actual metal ships. Usually, it's either solid wood or a combination of wood and metal. Someone has a robotic cow, I think. That's what I heard. <laughs> like, uh, sorry, my no phone. I don't know what cow is. <laughs> it's from all my angry viewers. No, my phone went off. <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have viewers. I do too. I got a whole 82 of them. I'm, I'm here. I stand corrected. Uh, and, uh, P, uh, Generally, the Silver Nation is avoided, and anybody from the Silver Nation out in the world is distrusted heavily. Because this, anybody from this that goes to the Silver Nation never returns. Well, no, there are people who do return. In fact, there's a uh, there's a business that specializes in collecting the ships that get abandoned, sitting outside, sitting on the ports of the Silver Cities. But if anybody goes into the Silver City, they never come back out. But what nobody understands, because everybody knows don't go there, people still go there to this very day and never return. Don't tell us why. That's a surprise. <laughs> well, actually, that's for a future book. I, I literally intend to go to ah. each, each under each, under each sun, I intend to do a book and it includes silver. Silver will just be the last one. So you'll eventually find uh, out why people disappear, but that's a while's off. So, so you keep talking about the different suns and stuff. You want to yeah. kind of explain that a little bit? Yeah, I'm, I'm really off yeah. on that. But go ahead. Uh, Aaron, not that make has... the place incredibly hot? Okay, a bit of a spoiler: they're not suns; they're glowing moons. Okay. Hey. But I can't call them moons because they're sc moons in skies of Arcadia. So that would be. Potential plagiarism. Yeah. Which I'm already doing um, bad enough as it is. Yeah. Well, other than this video, they'd be hard pressed to prove it. That is true. But, but uh, there's this video. So we, we can always sun's... delete it right afterward. <laughs> how, how dare you make a completely original RPG with strength, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma? As your primary ability scores. How dare that you? Has, that has <laughs> never been done before. Ever. Fucking, it ain't broke new ground. <laughs> Are there also four crystals that we need to And we just reference 1993's Draken. If you push these moons together, do you get a Captain Moon? I'll show you. I'm sorry. I, I, I was too loud. 
my neighbors are upset. She's she's still she's trying to sleep. She had a rough rough shift at the ticklish whisker last night. Yeah, I mean, Connell got a second time out for the night. <laughs> like I, I I get it being a stripper is hard, but like she's the one that decided she'd work as a stripper at the ticklish whisker. I mean it, it, it was it was a fun night, I will say that much. It was amputee night, so I mean it was just like uh, they can't get away. <laughs> Better than quarter night. <laughs> Hey, chicken wings were, I, were, were half off. I I I love I love quarter night instead of making it rain. I make it hail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like so, you're not giving it, anybody a concussion by throwing them a, a roll of quarters. Strippers guild. Uh, it's gonna be painful when they come back at us. True. Well, at least you don't have the debit card and you slide down the crack and just take the money out of the <laughs> G-string. <laughs> I thought it was an ATM. Okay, so you, 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 you're you talking about the, the different uh, the, the sons. different sons and everything uh, else. How do those uh, correlate? The, well, bit, slight backdrop. The planet itself is in a galaxy so not just yeah galaxy so inundated with magic itself the galaxy uh, actually produces oxygen the important part of that is the fact that the suns themselves or moons absorb that magic and produce it in a single form of power to the planet that is called a refraction suns refractions green represents life or creation Red represents uh, fire and destruction. Blue represents wind and change. Purple represents ice and permanence. Yellow represents lightning and power. Silver represents magic and high technology. Okay. And uh, Jade has a question for you here. Uh, can I get six truths about the setting? Six truths. Hmm. <laughs> about the setting uh, honey is the most expensive item on the planet <laughs> period what alright I like that No, me that means bees expensive no! yep cheap boots <laughs> yeah What else you got for us? Uh, you are capable. Be Russian. A, a character is capable of making his own, basically through force of will, his own special abilities. I call them hardiums. Like he's for example, the, uh, just to clarify, sorry, to maybe make it a little, just to clarify to make it a little easier for you. Uh, six truths or six things all players know. So, rather than oh. the characters, honey is expensive. Wait, that would oh, be yeah, something that would be. Yeah, honey is a good start. Oh yeah, well, hardium is another one because you need that for your special abilities. Because that is, like for example, I because you are on this on a ship, one of the hardiums I built into the game I call a uh, skywalk or something like that. It creates a cloud directly beneath your feet that you can use to jump in any direction. Good if you fall off the ship. You're a Nimbus. We can get a Nimbus. Only if you're pure at <laughs> heart. Pure bad. Another, <laughs> another truth. If you're not if you're not prepared for falling off the ship, you're gonna die. Because there is no water. <laughs> I plan on I plan on falling off the ship. No, I don't. <laughs> I plan on staying right here. Nothing bad will happen because I'm planning on it. Uh, something else all players should definitely know. All engines are powered by sun gems, but even though the if the sun gem is removed from the engine, it'll take hours for the ship to fall beneath the clouds. Okay. So, honey, honey is expensive. 
Honey is treasure. Oh yeah, like, delicious bastard. Um, ships are floating in the sky, where if you fall off the boat, there's no coming back, unless you have the ability to put a cloud underneath your feet. Well, I have other contingencies as well, but yeah. Okay, bungee cords. And ships yes, run actually. on uh, sun gems. Yes, sun Not gems so are up. well here. Here's a. Oh, this is definitely a good one for this one. Sun gems, sunstones, and sun fruits are all considered gifts of the sun. They fall from the uh, from the suns and crash down on the planet. And we'll get into the last one, which is I think, which is going to be the sun fruits. Sun fruits, when eaten, grant a single unique ability. Turn you allow you to turn into an animal, uh, allow you to turn into gas, or in the case of the one that interests Bruce, the ability to buy an item out of thin air. Nice. Interesting. Yeah, I, I yeah, that's interesting. Now, now, if you eat this fruit, will allow your limbs to just stretch ungodly far. You know, I can't do it to you. There That's is not one. Fair. Yes, actually, I threw one in the book that can do that. Gum gum fruit. <laughs> the fact that I know that, fuck. <laughs> it, mean, it means you watched a Netflix show once. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Well, you watched over a thousand episodes of an anime. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sad. <laughs> Love it, but sad. Uh, is it, uh, no, it's uh, not a called special nectar. The, that's still called honey. Uh, the reason why honey is so expensive is because there's there is no mini honeybees. There are three hives of what are giant honeybees and they're the only known honeybees in the world giant honeybees okay yes no bruce you cannot ride one i dude dude get out of my head <laughs> <laughs> you can't ride one of them and you can't ride a hamster i'm sorry and you can't steal one right, and I'm attach it to the it. ship you are you are a fun sponge shut up although although <laughs> If you find a hamster and its name is uh, Richard Gear, you might be able to ride it. I, I don't <laughs> want to ride Richard Gear. I want Boo, the, the amazing space hamster. Yes. What is yes, a daily life of a person on this planet like? Hmm. Jay, who's not here, is filling in for the questions. Thank you, Jay. Yes, because I was prepared for questions, not uh, blindly speaking, honestly. Uh, <laughs> Man, you're going to have what a What is a day of the person? Let's see here. Um, I have no questions. Uh, Soybase Jeremy, if you for, don't know who well, Boo is, you can't comment. <laughs> I'll do one for uh, NPCs and one for players. For the NPCs, it's... Uh, it can be like the day-to-day -day life from what we have to all the way back to uh, primitive because each each sun represents a different level of technology. With the uh, green sun, it's primitive uh, hunter-gatherer cultures. They have no unified nation. Under the red people, they under the red sun, they have steam-powered, but they haven't quite reached the industrial age yet. They're still almost 90% handmade. Under the blue sun, they are wind powered, but they do have the ability to use industrial technology. Uh, purple is technically just as primitive technologically as the green people, but they make up for that with almost entirely refractions or magic based technology. And under the yellow sun is actually technology higher than ours. And beneath the silver sun, slight spoiler, you will find technology equal to that of nanite level technology. But nobody knows that because, well, the silver people don't really communicate with the outside world. And I'm not bashing this. It sounds really cool. 
But at the same time, I feel like when you're talking about this, but I should have like a like a deck of cards in my hand with a mana source of different colors: red, yellow, green, blue, purple, silver. And for reverse. A and then you lost me there because I'm like, oh, deck of cards. Oh, not Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was thinking like our powers combined we make oh, never mind never mind <laughs> um, I was I was so happy then, magic and then we pull out the reverse <laughs> I reverse your reverse skip huh draw four uh, 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 go away <laughs> right. uh, what drives the nations. Or and or the people who sail the sky. I'm sorry. What? 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 What drives the nations? Oh, drives. Okay. And uh, yeah, and or the the folks uh, who who do sail the sky. Well, for the players, it is hopefully the sense of adventure because I'm setting it up so you can do domain play. But you uh, have to go back at least once every six months to a year to maintain your domain, which means that part of the reason why I set it up is the size of Jupiter. So you could literally go through your go through that process of going so far and coming back and never hit the same spot twice. Like you always have a fresh adventure for your character. And therefore, what I'd hope would drive the players would be uh, adventure. As for the world, what really drives the world at this particular moment is trade. Everybody has something that the other ones want because each culture is unlike like modern day where we have everybody can produce the same thing. Every culture is so different that each culture has something that the other wants. So, globalism so it, it's, yet. Got it. but there is a slight upset to this interestingly enough even though this yellow is the most technologically advanced of the four primary nations they are the youngest to be a nation they were actually at civil war until recently and only became a unified nation recently and they expanded their trade routes aggressively and therefore the other nations are still uneasy and there is a, the potential for a uh, war to be, bust out because of it So right now it's There's trade still... that drives most everybody, but it's an uneasy trade. Okay. So it, I mean, is does each you know kind of expand on that? Does you know each nation have you know its own um, interests that they definitely keep in mind besides the trade? Yes. I haven't gotten quite that far yet, but. I do know for a fact that this, the yellow people, their main focus is expansion. They are trying Ooh. to grow their territory. Can right now, see? it's not really, it's not really affecting the others because they're the planet is so big and they're so far apart. Yellow can expand, and the only thing it's really taking over are mini nations that the other three big nations don't care about. So, so basically, the more advanced nations really haven't gotten in there to do like uh, subjugation of lesser nations. Uh, but when they come across them, what keeps them from doing that? Nothing. They do it. They either okay. you join our empire or you die. So they're, they're expansionists. So let's say I, ah. I'm, I'm the, from the yellow tribe, right? And yeah. me and a group of people get on a boat and go over to visit the green tribe. Well, I need workers. So are you saying I can go over there and steal their people and make them workers for the people of the, uh, the, uh, the yellow, uh, yellow sun? Slavery is actually one of the higher forms of trade in this game. I'm not shying from it. Oh. All right. Right. There is also a lot of in, sorry. There is also a lot of indentured indentured servitude where 
like for example, a Yukonal, if you were to look hard enough, you could probably find a group of uh, people from the Green Nation who would be willing to work off a license to go to the uh, become members of the Yellow Nation. Interesting. Hmm. Real but slavery, parallel. but but actual slavery is also there too. That's like, I don't shy from it. It's like we have one culture that it literally is basically well that they literally are not basically they are hunter gatherers and we have three cultures that uh one still does things by hand one does things slightly industrious and by hand one does things purely by magic they're the only ones that don't have a crap ton of slaves because they don't need them and we have one that does almost a completely industrious but they still need workers so Purple's really the only one that doesn't engage in active slavery, and that's only because they don't need to. But they have slaves in their culture. Okay. So can, uh, can you give us an example of a exploration or adventure, uh, something that might you know, lie beyond the unknown? Uh, something like, hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, for, for, for instance, like that, you said that the, the, the yellow folks are, are doing a lot of expansion. Uh, what's some of the things they may have discovered during that expansion in the unknown during that exploration? A, uh, well, this is actually something I was going to write into the book anyway, so it kind of works out. They found a vault of ancient weapons, and ancient weapons are made differently from modern weapons. They uh, usually do not so much more damage, but unanswerable damage. Like, for example, as long as you hit, you're cutting through armor because their metal is superior to ours, which is the reason why ancient weapons are very, very valuable. But there's the stock they found was only like of a hundred ancient swords, so it's, they're only giving them to their admirals. <clears throat> but another thing that they could find is I wish my camera was working. Uh, I have a couple things here, example, that I'm going to be using in the game that are basically ancient abominations, combinations of man, uh, monstrosity, and machine that still work. So like old artifacts and war machines and such, or what? Yeah. Artifacts, war machines, uh, along with just simple like temples. Like no one knows what a lot of these ancient temples, like they're obviously temples just by their iconography and what's in them, but nobody knows what they're for. And then there's buildings that they find that literally no reason for them in the modern context exists. Okay. What what does religion look like on the planet? There pretty much isn't any. What little religion there is is basically sun worshippers, which is the sun kit. They've basically learned as long as they do the right kind of ritual or worship the sun on a daily basis, without being born refractionists, they can use refractions at, to a lesser degree to the refractionist. The refractionist has a uh, the ability of mage the ascension type magic. Everyone else can only use a pre-existing single color, where refractionists can actually use multiple colors. Now, I can't. I have to look at my character sheet. It, I believe that the refra uh, the uh, that the um, 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 sunkin cannot use multiple colors, but they can make up their own refractions from the colors that they have access to. Because hey, each, each person I got a is born questions. with, it. yeah. Well, let me That's go ahead and finish with what you're doing. Okay. Uh, each person is born with a particular set of colors within their body that determines what kind of refractions and even what kind of hardium that they'll to lean towards using. There is no restrictions like, oh, you have to use a red hardium or something like that because there is no like colors in the hardiums. But if you have a red red uh, refraction in your body, chances are you're going to lean towards a fire-based hardium because that's kind of your thing. But in refractions, you can learn a you can learn a refraction 
but it has to pre-exist, meaning it has to be something that the refractionist or the sunkin made or is out of the book. And it, ha and it has to be uh, one of the colors you possess in your body. Interesting. So with, uh, in, in talking about that, are there like artificial limbs or anything else like that that can be attuned to yes. things that you don't have? Yes. I got this leg and it's got a red gem in it. Now, could I play a raccoon that likes to go steal other people's limbs? Uh, there's only humans in this game. And there goes that demographic. Hey, PCG. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How uh, how does the, the the game function as getting a party together? Um, I, I'm getting the impression that they're all the crew of a ship or they're pretty much going to be stuck in a town or a city of some sort. Is that uh, kind of what, 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 what you're leading toward? Yeah, I haven't written it in yet, but the main starting idea I was going to suggest is they're all crew members aboard a ship because eventually the pirate and the uh, the ship uh, the uh, sailor, which are both uh, well, the sailors can only be in a navy. He can't be a freelance like a pirate can. Okay, then both who would the own ability the ship? To be a captain. Uh, Technically, you're not supposed to start off as player, uh, somebody who owns the ship. You're supposed to start off as crew, uh, members aboard a crew. The, okay, uh, you GM mentioned starts earlier. Off with... Go yeah. ahead. Oh, well, the you GM mentioned starts earlier off with the quote unquote. Uh, how they, the, the, the people found this uh, cache of weapons and they were so awesome and they went all to the admirals, which meant so whoever was on the ship, they got dick out of the treasure and they gave the best and, and mailed it off to different people all over the freaking country to, to give to the higher ups. Um, where's the motivation for the players to not, you know, uh, basically be doing uh, somebody else's dirty work and getting shit pay. Army. You do it the honest way. <laughs> well, if you're not captain of the ship, if you're not captain of the ship and you're the lowest rung on the ladder. Cause you just, came on board your first level etc um you know how long is it going to be before you start seeing some spoils you know in, in a campaign or do you have to like you know basically steal from the party and or the captain and pocket the shit and not tell anybody well as uh the example i gave for the people that was a navy like an actual legitimate uh navy so that was following mm -hmm. orders and they get paid based on being part of the navy and if you're not a good soldier, mm -hmm. you get executed. But as a, uh -huh. if a pirate, pirate group found that, it would be, I'm going to encourage for the uh, GM to be like, hey, you're part of a pirate crew. Everything gets divided equally. That's how you pay your That's how you pay your crew unless you're a jackass and want your mm -hmm. crew to eventually revolt against you. Well, because I've been in campaigns like that where uh, the, the parties did all the, the grunt work and then they bring all the treasure back aboard the ship and then the captain starts handing it out to basically everybody but the crew or the party that actually went and got the stuff. You know, it's not like a, a finder's keepers. You find it, you keep it kind of situation. It's like, uh, well, I found this cool sword, but chances are I'm never going to get to use it outside this dungeon because the captain's going to take it. Well, sucks to be you. You're not the captain or the first mate, or the sergeant of arms, or the quartermaster. You're some schmuck uh -huh. picking up at the port. Earn your uh -huh. keep, not bitching. And why would you ever, you know, volunteer for that if you're just, if just by sitting on board, you're still going to get the same share? Freedom. That's why you can... That's why the captain uh, prestige rank is unlockable early for pirates. Uh, every other... Every single... OCC except the pirate and the the uh, uh, sailor has to wait until rank three, a uh, level uh, thirty, before they can start playing domain play. The pirate gets to do it uh -huh. at level fifteen. Same with the sailor, for that exact reason. Like, okay, we we don't like how the play DM is being captain. Okay, I'm fine at level fifteen. Hey guys, you want to help me buy a ship and we'll start doing our own thing? 
Oh, know, yeah. Like, Let's get away from the GM as captain. I like um, this. Let's you, just you got a paywall there for, for domain play. Bruce no likey. Uh, like you don't – well, you don't – well, I'm making you buy your own ship. You're not getting a ship for free. But you can hire crew. You don't have to – you don't have to like pay pay off people to get the crew. Like, hey, you get you get paid when I get paid, type thing. And under most of them, you get your followers for free. It's just I don't. The ships are meant to be expensive, and especially if you're getting a custom ship, I don't think you should get that for free. What if you like the ship that you're on? And you just don't like your captain. Uh, then you just <laughs> mutiny. Literally, I mean that that is part of the rules of the game. You can mutiny. Well, paint me Mel, uh, Mel Gibson and you, uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins, because we know how this is going to go. Hi, looks like you've got a couple questions burning there for you. Oh, no, you got uh, you hit it with the with the comment of um, what keeps me like I heard you can't do domain play until you're uh, sufficiently high level, which almost sounds like end game level when you finally get freedom. But I'm like. But what keeps me from that level five, sneaking in, uh, I sneaking up in the middle of the night, you know, passing some coin off to the sergeant of arms, walking in, sneaking into the captain's quarters and doing a little bit of um, aggressive cleanup promoting of myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just because the it, it's literally just because you automatically can at certain levels doesn't mean you can only at certain levels. Straight up, if right. there's a mutiny and you want a level five to be captain, the level five is now captain. I understand. Okay, cool. I, I like because I have no problem. Like, I understand buying a brand new ship is expensive. I played a lot of spy, a lot of airships slash sci-fi games slash. It's bit. I have notes. If you want to know how expensive it is to maintain a, a ship, the line. Um, so I mean, maintaining, feeding and maintaining a dreadnought is expensive. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so how, how many ways do we have to make money? Because obviously money is the most important thing in the universe here. In fact, yeah. to the point where I don't because you mentioned trade, and while there's all these cool c cultures and things, unless there's a culture of a bunch of people with no taste buds, but they like spicy garbage, <laughs> and a bunch of people who go, spice bad, but idiots buy spice, so I conquer your country because you've got spice. Do you put it on our own food? No. That's for that's for savages. We don't, we don't eat that crap. But we sell it to people. So is... Do we have a very complex trade network uh, that I can actually look at and figure out the the optimal trade routes and what and where to steal, where to steal the ship and head off to go do my um, poker crook? You know, I China I China t I I t t t t t t routes because I will happily go. Do, do you want to do adventure? No, the profit margin this time of year is is is, is a whole. Over here, there's X X product and Y product is in one sit. But adventure, profit, adventure, <laughs> profit, at profit margin. <laughs> but we can do things that involve adventure and the Spacey Guild says, go fuck yourself. We're making money. So uh, Kaiser Quartermaster. No, well, no. no. He pulls out his spreadsheet. This That's says right. we do profit. <laughs> profit, motherfucker. We're doing it. We're doing this. And I know it's like all this cool magic swords and stuff and, and cool magic. And trust me, the moment you said Mage the Ascension thing, my brain was like, so what are the spheres? I What irritate do I need to be to be able to do the effects I need to do? And when can I... When can I do a bunch of garbage spice and then full space? That's all I care about at this point. Uh, like, well, you get a, trade, I, course, we, correspondent, 
I correspondence five. On it. I I will fucking warp. I will warp space and time. I don't care if I turn into a weird mute. I weird mute in a glass tube. I don't care. Folding space. <laughs> well, as for the uh, trade, I haven't written anything directly down yet, but yeah, the the idea of a t- entirely trade based campaign, not outside the realm of possibility at all. In fact, it's it's very feasible. Uh, I, I'm setting it up that trade is, uh, well, like for example, I have. If you read through the selection of items you can purchase, that is uh, a general, general, uh, yeah, a general price purchase, and a lot of them have a lot of varying varying prices. Like spices, those are worth a lot. Mm. Uh, and an excellent example of like you were talking about trade, uh, bef- about that uh, you would do a trade for your char- character. Before I even heard that, I had already thought of the fact that your guys' campaign starts under, like, the, the little thing I'm doing for this is basically starts under that. The captain, yeah. since chances are I'm the one who's going to be doing the captain, hold on a second, is doing, uh, we're bringing in three barrels of honey from someplace else. And though the ship is technically being paid off because it was a loan that we got for the ship, we're, you guys are still getting a, a whole bunch of money from the honey. And you're being sent off technically on an adventure, but on an adventure that's specifically meant to increase your trade potential for the future. Cool. And, now, and that's the point we, we mutiny and take over the ship. Now we have honey. <laughs> now, now, all of this is predicated on the idea that now I would like to also do cool adventures and on the high seas and make friends that make friends from enemies because through the power of being an awesome person. But if I'm told that money is money is what makes the world go around, friendship goes out the window, money. So it's one of those things where if you want high adventure, take the emphasis off cash. But it I but if we're constantly I reminded that so you want to go on an adventure, yeah, you need to pay approximately a five hundred gold piece a month a month for restocking fees for uh, for food and the crew. If you need to spend also extra money or X amount of cash to maintain the ship's the ship's drive and hull, here's the uh, here's your fuel costs. And if, and at that point, cash becomes the only thing that matters because I want freedom, but freedom costs money, and unfortunately, I need more money. And if piracy isn't an option, trade has to become the only thing I care about. So I would like adventure. So having the having the I don't I I need money to adventure means I have to make money, and make money means no adventure. Money I I I don't want to be a mon I don't want to be a mundane spreadsheet driver. I quit I quit Eve Online for that. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's I haven't heard that be, game in forever. It's still it's, to- it's still there. It's still evil, and they just included X Excel integration. So now it really is flying spreadsheets. It's the best thing. Okay, ever. so 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 along those lines of doing like a trade trade type you know campaign, what makes that different different than like a traveler you know type game, and you know where you're doing the doing you know the traveler you know trade type stuff as opposed you know, opposed to this uh well as kai was saying you gotta maintain your ship and all that uh i was said uh going to be setting it up that you don't have to uh maintain your ship like constantly it's like mostly after battles oh you took some damage you better repair uh Fuel costs, there is no technical fuel. You, once you put a sun gem in, as long as the sun gem is undamaged or not removed, the ship will go forever. And food, it's, it's, it's meant to be kind of abstract. Oh, I buy three months worth of food. That's, we'll say, $1,000 a month worth of food. Voila, you got all the food you need. And, and of course, okay. there is the fact that you're supposed to be able to fish while you're out there, so you don't need to constantly be filling up your stocks. Where were you? As long as there's an easy way to make it to make five thousand to make a thousand gold a month, a, um, a cycle, cool. Yeah, cool. I could I could invent, I could put away my spreadsheets and go on an adventure. Yeah, like 
well, actually, like, I'm not going to spoil it, but when you go off on your second part of the adventure that I send you on, you'll be going out specifically to fetch known resources that are known to be valuable. So it's uh, along the lines of trade, but it's also a bit of an adventure on the same hand. Okay, well, you said you, that these are living, you know, they're... living resources. Okay. So, well, you said that there are, there, you know, like, you know, you can fish, you know, this is all taking, taking place in the sky. Uh, do we ever land on the yes. planet or is it, it like actually on the uh, ground? Yes. You, you can actually land. Uh, you, there's islands. Well, most ships don't land. You, uh, you either sh uh, fly down on a small shuttle or climb down on ropes. But okay. uh, yeah, there's, there's islands and there's, there's uh, one of the books I intend to, cover eventually is it talks about the fact that there are continents so large you can go an entire adventure without ever having to get aboard a skyship okay so it, while you're on the skyship uh since that seems to be where where it's kind of geared toward uh yes what kind of you know monsters environments uh that they that you'll actually like come across with this uh, one of the things I love is giant insects, so that's one of the common things you'll be having to deal with. And once once most insects reach a certain size, they stop being afraid of humans. And there are ship-sized insects. That's why I use the term in the book. Instead of a ship-to-ship -ship combat, ship-sized combat. Okay. And there are also uh, there are other things out there like ship-sized fish. There are human-sized fish. Like a, well, it's a tuna. Kind of a small, it, it, it's kind of a small spoiler. But the, the what you guys are going for on the island that I'm that you're going to be going for on the adventure that I'm sending you through tomorrow will actually be uh, you're catching fish large enough to ride, and they're worth. I, whoa, 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 what is right, I have to look. He's been playing tomorrow. He meant next week. Oh, not tomorrow. Next he week. Next sorry. Week. Okay. Sorry, just checking. Yeah, I got I got another previous engagement tomorrow. <laughs> I'm getting excited, uh, slash. I, I have a, a cold, so I got medication in my system. That's okay, no problem. Uh, so so uh, I, so do these these fish actually do a lot of them attack the ship? Oh, uh, giant-sized fish aren't yeah. as known for attacking uh, ships. Giant-sized insects are. Okay. So are there any, you know, like uh, tornadoes or anything else like that that need to be like, or, you know, like big storms? You know, you're talking about Jupiter. I keep thinking of the big, you know, red storm, you know, on Jupiter. Is there something like that that's going around the planet or... Uh, storms do build up, but there are also massive uh, uh, flying stone reef barriers, cloud reef barriers, and actual just sheer stone walls that usually cut down on these uh, storms. The world isn't divided like in sections, but these air, but there are uh, these reefs can sometimes cross almost the entire planet. So it's okay. Imagine if someone drained the Great Barrier Reef, where they have the, all these different ways it go, grows out in different sizes and shapes and all that. Imagine something kind of like that, just world scale. Okay. I, uh, I think I'm going to have to watch every pirate movie that Disney has not made before we start <laughs> doing this. Because as much as I like Johnny Depp, I don't think that's the feel for this. No, a uh, good example of a pirate movie that I thought of really heavily for this, like it inspired a lot of this movie, was Cutthroat Island. Or a lot of this movie. A lot of this good game movie, is Cutthroat Good movie. Good movie. Very, very but good movie. movie. That, that movie is such a shame. That that movie destroyed an entire fucking movie house because they threw $60 million of debt at that film and there was no way for it to financially recoup and, you know, make money but that was carol co one of the great mistakes of the 90s yeah ice pirate sunday <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, you're doing Ice Pirates too? No, but I am now. <laughs> Not this Sunday. I haven't got my own show. I got rewatched. Sunday, we're watching Ice Pirates in my Discord, and then Monday oh, night, we're talking yeah, about it. Yeah, I might have to, uh, I will have to make some time to get that going. I, uh, no, this song's incredibly fun. I, I know, uh, now knowing the information you gave us, um, the class I picked was a, a uh, <laughs> God, I don't know how I'm going to play this. I didn't know exactly how I was going to play this beforehand, but now, fuck, was going to be a paladin. And well, paladin a, type, a paladin type. Now, paladins for the most part have a, a huge, huge, I mean, bulging, huge, uh, uh lance shoved up their ass. Huge, huge. Uh, I, de- I describe these I describe these guys as being more of a party type person. They prefer to uh, use refractions and hardium that enhance the that give them their group their group better right. abilities. As for being a, a stick up their ass, yeah. Uh, I have I have set up the uh, alignments, quote unquote, as you can. Uh, you have four, four. <laughs> you have uh, four uh, reactions: your reaction uh, to death, your reaction to pain and suffering, your reaction to theft, and your reaction to lie. Okay, so okay. Uh, <laughs> so if you want, you could make him a stick in the. You could put a put a stick up your character. Oh no, no, I, I, I'm not. I mean, I a I, go stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, I think I will run him with having a few moral uh, hiccups, but not, you know, I Judge Dread. I am the law. I am the law. Talk about movies that need to be remake, and boy, do they remake it well. Um, all right. <laughs> yeah, I know, Jade. You can't bitch at me for playing a paladin. You're not going to be there. I will hear from you privately, but you can't do it here. It's okay, Jade. You heard him. You heard him earlier. There's, there's no, there's only one really god out there. The rest of the deities took the week off. You should be in hog heaven then. <laughs> You're only in trouble if you get caught. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I never get caught, so I'm never in trouble. Hey, is that Christopher uh, Hansen behind you there, Shadow? Is that what? Christopher Hansen. I don't know who the fuck that is. Uh, okay, so you said humans humans are the only you know, race on this planet, correct? Yes. Why? Well, I, I want to be a so, monk. So, what are the what are the the rumors of the older races from caches that are found, etc., that have been found up uh, to this point that would be kind of common knowledge? It is believed that what what has been found comes from uh, other humans because everything is human shaped, human sized. The, when you do find um, anything that's not, it usually is obviously belong to a construct of some kind because the construct isn't too far away or it's too heavy for a human to have ever possibly lifted. Aliens. Okay. Uh, the uh, with the with w- with the trade and whatnot, is it? How easy is it to be like a freelance trader to be able to trade with whomever? Or are there certain? Uh, you're, you're only allowed to trade with one uh, one uh, nation and not another nation. Restrictions that are basically put on on there for trade wise. Uh, usually the only restrictions are on um, individual items, not uh, if you could trade with certain people. It's very, very hard with the size of the world to maintain like perfect deals. 
or I- independent deals because a you oh yeah you can only deal with you ever again okay uh there's like a thousand like thousands of mini nations that literally have nowhere near the power as you do but they aren't going to have the same restrictions so i'll just go deal with them and not you bye is it more of a first come first serve hypothetically let's say i have a we have a cargo of uh bananas let's just you know use fr- uh, fruit yeah and there's another guy a food? Uh, food bananas oh, okay and there's another guy another npc character that we're bumping heads with at you know for storyline bumping heads and he's has he's trying to get into the same dock as we are is it more is it one of the uh, first come first serve yes you have bananas but he has bananas and he came first or is it uh, like a locked in contract type deal well if you do have a if you do actually have a contract with them obviously contract comes first but most time it's first come first serve like usually if you have a contract it's because maybe all right so all right. freelancers are meant so, to be a, par- a huge part of this i mean we, we, we've kind of gotten into got an idea now of kind of like the world and, and kind of some of the things that are out there uh the next thing you know that basically for for going forward here let, let's let's look at more of the you know the mechanics uh like for instance uh you said that they're able to do uh things with the spells or whatever the abilities that are gotten from the fruit and all that like uh yeah. like how would those translate and what would the, what do those kind of look like with the in in like maybe a battle type situation uh as opposed to a non non uh you know encounter type situation okay well i'll talk about uh all three the refractions hardium and sunfruit uh starting with refractions okay. in the case of reflection refract no, refractions they are considered an aspect of light. That's the reason why they're called that. And most time it comes from the palm of your hand, but it is definitely an internal thing. So I have the, I do have the rule. You can uh, wear gloves, but your gloves have to have holes in them so the light can sink through. Uh, but in general, you don't want to wear gloves at the very least. You want to let your hand be visible. And... But what that would look like in battle is, well, outside, yeah, we'll start with in battle. In battle, refractions are instantaneous, unless they unless they state otherwise. Like, I actually have something called the Silver Spear, which is something I think Kai would definitely appreciate. I believe it's Kai anyway. Uh, you shoot it at somebody, it sticks into them, doing X damage, and then if they try to move, even if they succeed or fail at removing it, they receive even more damage from it. So it's a pinning spell. <coughs> Outside of combat, though, that takes a few minutes to cast. Hmm. Because refraction, because uh, there is the, what I call in-battle focus. Outside of battle, you don't have that same focus. You can't just cast something instantaneously. Your life has to be in basically in danger for you to have the uh, adrenaline, for lack of a better term, to cast something instantly. Same thing goes for Hardium. A Hardium does not have the same abilities as refractions. Refractions have a uh, more magical quality to them. Therefore, they can be a little more flexible where uh, Hardium is more of a force of will. So it, it can be it's it's really a one trick pony type ability. Like, for example, uh, I can create a di- I like want to create a we- uh, weapon. Uh, one of the Hardium I created was a distance attack called Shockwave. Even if you upgrade it past that it overall is just going to be something that you can use to hit somebody at a distance with and not much more but you could get creative with your base idea for your hardium because you are supposed to make it up the hardium is definitely where you, you where you are supposed to make things up for your for your character because that's one of the things i always hated in games is oh we got like a thousand spells but absolutely no concept of you being able to make your own that sucks and, and uh, how do you go about how do you go about making your own? You discuss with uh, the GM what you want your hardium to be, and 
the GM does have final say as to how powerful it is. And therefore, like, uh, oh, uh, hey, Kai, can you think of something off the top of your head you'd like your character to do? I'm the one who's using the leaf swords, right? Yes. Okay. I'm already, uh, I'm already more awesome than everyone else in the party. I don't need to do anything else. I have three swords. What do <laughs> I care? Do you put one in your mouth? Eventually. Yes, Actually, no. I, I, I play on juggling that bitch. It's a dancing sword? No, I just fucking stab, slash, grab, stab, slash. <laughs> <laughs> So hypothetically, let's say I'm a spellcaster, right? And you're saying I can come up with my own spell. So I want to, I don't know, uh, make a spell that puts a bubble of bubble of air around my head. Air bubble. Okay. I can just, this is what I want, or I want, you know, tell them what the spell does. I have the fractal, uh, the fract, fractals or whatever. I, I'm sorry about that. And the knowledge of how to uh, create a spell, I tell the DM, hey, uh, in this case scenario, I wish to put a air bubble around mine and my teammate and uh, my party's head. Is that something? Is that what you're kind of talking about, or am I just missing the boat? Uh, I didn't talk about it quite clear enough. I, I realize that's my fault. Um, what a character does for learning new Hardium is the rule of six. Six times outside of battle, six times inside of battle. Uh, when you when you first learn, like oh, like that air bubble. Uh, I like it. I liked it as a, as the way you described it. So it's like, uh, since you want to one, you want to make it big enough to put around your entire party at once. I'm going to say that's going to cost you fifteen uh, focus points, which is what you get per level. Uh, you get five, ten per level, but you get those per level. Uh, and I'd say 25 spirit focus for like, that's what it, uh, that's a shared mana pool in battle. Right. And yeah, I'd say uh, 15 for the initial cost, uh, 25 for when you want to cast it inside a battle, but you have to cast it six times outside of battle first. And then you have to cast it three times inside a battle. It'll cut uh, each character gets three actions. Unlike Plady, you only get three. Period. You have to cast it uh, first three times you cast it in battle. It costs all three of your actions. And the next three times it costs you, you cast it in battle. It costs you two of your actions. And from the seventh casting on, it costs you one action. Okay. So it says a, a refined learning uh, how to optimize the spell, essentially. <coughs> optimize ca optimize yeah. casting. Not a bad idea. Can you hear me? So, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, we hear you just fine. Hey, well, uh, my, so I, we we, we kind of... Oh, okay. Uh, the, but we kind of got got off because you didn't talk about the third uh, portion there, which was the fruit, right. the sun fruit. Sun fruits. Uh, there are three basic categories to the sun fruit: uh, animal, ability. Uh, no, animal, element, and ability. Uh, in the animal fruit category, it, it I only have four in each category, but you can literally steal from the uh, devil fruit offline from for this if you wanted to I pretty much did. uh in the devil fruit uh actually the captain of the ship has one of the devil fruits he's got a bird fruit so we'll come to him first is the fact that one of the things i actually gave him is basically the ability to do harpy feather attack which is throw feathers at people like i could see that being a bird based ability and once again, you're a, you're a, this is another one where you're encouraged to come up with your own things. But there is a cost to sun fruits. If you eat a sun fruit, you lose all your uh, hardium and refraction abilities. You can no longer use either of those. And that happens at any level. So if you have like a crap ton of refractions and you're a refractionist, well, even a refractionist, you don't want to eat these fruits because it'll still take your refractions from you. You're no longer a refractionist at that point. 
Um, but even if you're like level, uh, you're at max level, you eat one of these fruits, you lose all your abilities, and you have, and you slowly over time regain all the points that you lost, basically. But it's going to take you time to regain all that. If you're lower level and you do this, you uh, regain an additional, I think it's, I remember correctly, it's additional five per level until you regain all the lost points. But you don't just get them all back immediately. So it's always good to get a sun fruit early on if you can, which is part of the reason for creation you can actually have a sun fruit. But, um, sorry, uh, and then uh, part of the elemental sun fruits, yeah, I have either given you solid forms or gaseous forms. Uh, like, for example, I did add the gum gum fruit. It's basically called the rubber fruit. You turn into a rubber man. You have the, I also have the diamond fruit. I also have the cloud fruit and the, I forgot what the other one was, but two, uh, two of the fruits fire. give you flying. Fire, yeah, flying. Uh, fire and uh, cloud give you the ability to fly. Also makes you immune to a lot of damage. Like most physical attacks don't ha damage you. It has to be an energy-based attack. So if you like put lightning onto your sword, that will do damage because it has an energy basis to it. But like if you just use a simple enchanted weapon and it, all it is is like extra sharp edge, it won't do anything. When you're in a gas, when you're uh, one of the fire or a uh, cloud fruit. And then you have the ability fruit, which is like I described before, the uh, one of the most OP fruits that in the index for, for the uh, sun uh, for the double fruit index is the store fruit. You can literally purchase anything for a price. Yes, Kai. Okay, this sounds all really cool and awesome between be, between you know magical I uh, magical fun and super powered fruit and stuff, but. What about the poor people who don't have anything besides, you know, who don't have the ability to call down the fire of the gods magically, you know, magically and make things magically appear or punch someone 40 feet away because they have a, they have a, a rubber band fist or to shoot magic uh, feathers. Hopefully there's something that's cool for, you know, those whose entire thing is, I'm here to kick people really cool and not get my hands dirty or stab people really, really good. So I, cause if most of us just stand around waiting for the cool guys with all the cool, awesome powers to be really, really awesome. And then wait for something to come to us because, you know, we don't have Nimbus, uh, Nimbus's flying powers or the ability to teleport. Some of us have to like, you know, wait for the adventure to come to us <laughs> so that well that's you know, where um, otherwise we're otherwise you're gonna have a few of us standing around with, holding a sign to the dragon saying get the fuck down here you bastard because we were waiting for it to land for the last 30 minutes yeah hey, well Garrett. that's where um two two sun fruit uh, two sun fruit two um hardium abilities i put into the game that's meant to be like a suggestion i nearly need to get that shirt i keep forgetting to no, you don't need that shirt. There's another one of Hungar shirt you need. I I like the no. I'd get that one for my sister. Uh, navigator. <laughs> Pepe the Navigator is fucking amazing. I'm I'm gonna be ordering that next week. That's another one I need to get. But um, the, the two abilities that I built into the game, and I'll probably try to come up with more, is number one the um, the one I mentioned earlier where you can actually. Uh, shockwave it's a distance attack meant for any type of weapon that's obviously not already ranged like a pistol which pist uh, swordsmen are not forbidden from using pistols it is one of their weapon proficiencies they can take and um, and the other one is I uh, once again stole from one piece flash step you can move anywhere within 60 feet in a single action oh uh, cool I'll get to, I I'll get to relive my I, I'm gonna live out my my bleach Shinigami dreams of having gets a good touch show and flash step because that's what everyone uses all the time. No, no, I want to get the berry that allows me to kick people in the crotch a thousand times. Look, all, look. If I've learned anything from watching shonen anime, is yeah. that all you need is gets a good show. 
all you need because what they ain't coming anywhere near me uh shockwave slash oh sorry that's um i, I that's um Inuyasha. um or it gets me my show or um i slashed or air slash razor slash slashy slash that causes a rage attack yep my sword cuts the air and cuts you oh. i'm okay with that and flash step is pretty always you know eventually uh, eventually that could be probably refined to pretty much just walking on air and doing the full bleach bullshit oh, um, i'm sorry i've got a sip yes, for my buddy hockey, powers. hockey powers are definitely awesome ah! all right i'll stop all right so yeah this, this kind of give you guys a little bit of an idea of some of the stuff he's talking about this is based off the pdf that he did send us so we kind of had an idea of what was going on uh now one thing that you know the uh the 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 little bird in our ear uh on, head in there uh was to uh how does a round of battle look and how does that play out uh a round of human-sized combat is six seconds and a round of ship-sized combat is 12 seconds uh how does uh, it? Well, thanks to Kai, it looks a lot more dynamic than it used to. Admittedly, it used to just be two guys hitting each other with a stick. Is that exactly how Kai describes it? I have to agree. Like, <laughs> it was just simple I attack, you attack, I can dodge, I can parry, and that was it. Woo! Kai made it so. Kai, uh, Kai's suggestion made it so you can actually not only parry, if you successfully parry, you can perform a counter strike. Everybody gets two per uh, uh, two per turn, and they can use extra actions to do perform extra counterattacks if they want. Except the um, swordsman, which gets six counterattacks per round, and the um, sunkin or the paladin, which gets four counter strikes per round. Which and then Kai turned around and simply asked, "Hey, uh, can I do something with all these counterattacks per round? Like defend people?" <laughs> so yeah, as long as someone's within your uh, area of movement and that includes within flash step movement you can defend somebody for you can uh, parry an attack to counter somebody uh, to you can parry an attack aimed at somebody else and perform a counter strike but you do have to uh, parry before the player before the other player has rolled to see if they're parrying or dodging or before cool. they parry or dodge it, I should say now, uh, Green Apple had asked uh, what system this will be. Uh, Green Apple, sorry about that. Uh, we, we got preempted by Hungar, so uh, we, which is not a problem. We love Hungar. Uh, but uh, the uh, system is actually the one that the Crafting Gamer has come up with that he's writing the rules for. We're kind of doing the alpha test right now just to help uh, flesh out some things and see how bad we can break it. Uh, I mean, how bad, how good we can play it, and uh, kind of go from there. So that that it, it's it, it's kind of his work in progress. It's his kind of his little baby, kind of like what Bruce has got going with his game. Uh, we're we're uh, taking craft, craft, uh, crafting gamers uh, game that he's been working on, and uh, we figure we'll give it give it a little shakedown cruise. See uh, see what happens. Yeah, and it's not based off of any one system. It's kind of a Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> Be my Frankenstein. So, uh, with, with this being said, you know, you've mentioned uh, a couple of classes there. What other classes are there available? Uh, we have the pirate, the uh, ship, uh, the sailor. Basically, the same thing. One's just freelance. One's part of a navy. We have the. Um, hold on a second. Let me. Well, I try to remember when I actually have, have the book. Let's see here. Uh, the marksman, which is basically the sniper, the chef, the shipwright, the swordsman, the sunkin or paladin, and the refractionist, or the the wizard. I'm currently working on a, a ninth one, the Sunister, 
which is basically meant to be a uh, bard type character. Okay. So, so uh, and each of them have their own uh, their own yes. things. I'm assuming. Uh, yes, the marksman, uh, when using a rifle, and the target is over 100 feet away, will not will not suffer minuses. Like, for example, if the ship's rocking. Oh, that's a minus six. Not for this marksman. He gets a plus uh, up to a maximum of plus three. He gets that plus no matter how bad the ship is rocking or any minuses like that. Other bonuses will be minused, but he gets that. I'm a, I am know what the, how to deal with this ship bonus at the very least. The chef obviously gets... Uh, well, not obviously. The chef gets... The chef gives you bonuses towards... Uh, Pretty much anything based off the meal they cooked. The GM and the uh, player negotiate what kind of bonuses and how long they last. Okay. It looks like they yeah. all get uh, skills and whatnot along with those. Oh yes, they all get skills, uh, skills uh, skill sets, hobbies, or in Palladium secondary skills. And not all, but some of them also get hardiums or refractions as part of their first set, but not not all of them. Like the ship right here, he doesn't get any refractions or hardiums to start off with, but that's because he doesn't interest. They don't interest him. The sun, uh, the shipwright is uh, basically the tinkerer, or as you said, the artificer. When you first like, yeah, I want to play that. Yes, I'm I'm playing the shipwright in uh, uh, maybe just a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, I think the only thing that's left uh, of his actual body is his brain at this point. If we if we talked about that correctly, uh, yeah, you uh, it should say somewhere in here at rank that uh, when you choose to be cyborg, you get uh get to roll two d four, I believe it is, to see how yeah. many cybernetic parts you have. <laughs> and yeah, that's just like the that. Yeah. And that's just the beginning. Like you can, you can actually have your entire body changed out as long as your brain is still intact. You could be one hundred percent cyborg. That's the only rule I have. Your brain must remain intact. Yeah, rank three uh, ship ride is a cyborg. The player may choose for the character to become either a legendary cyborg or a chop shop head. So, the, so there's only like yeah. three levels to this then, or three ranks. No, there's uh, there's uh, yeah, there's three ranks. There's forty five levels, fifteen levels per rank. Okay, and how easy are levels to come by? Uh, levels are meant to be uh, one hundred experience per level, no matter what the level, no matter uh, how high the level is, and you're supposed to get experience at five to ten per level, but it specifically says in the book. You are welcome to adjust the amount of experience or the level of. Oh no! He ran out of experience points. No. No, oh, please. <laughs> and. We're hoping he'll pop right back in. There he is. Ooh. How well, long were you talking before you realized you weren't with us? Two, three seconds. Back with us? No. Sometimes he has issues when he goes out and comes back in. So we'll bear with no, him I for heard a you. second. I, I still hear you. Okay, there you are. Were you cussing? Yeah. I feel like somebody should be cussing. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the, the experience is meant to be very uh, moldable as to how quickly you level up. Because, okay. like, for example, you do have the 45 levels, and there are people who are like, well, that's that's going to take you forever to get to uh, prestige, rank, get you to uh, prestige or... Uh, uh, a domain rank, which is rank three. 
that's where it's like, okay, well, you want to get to domain rank three faster, then just give out more experience. It's only 100 experience per level. Or if you vice versa, people who are like, oh, I want to level up very slow, all right, then just make the experience go up 100 per level and you'll level up even slower. Ah, you're in the refractions. Yeah. Each refraction is uh, just... separated by color and then or organized by a uh, letter. Yeah, so like uh, for it, green, you know, you have grow plants, healing light, wood rot, poison or talk, you know, cure. I'm supposed, I think that's supposed to be cure poison toxin. Yeah, I, I, I can't spell, so I use a, a, a voice to word. So if anything's ah. misspelled, it's not my fault. <laughs> I completely understand. I, I uh, spelling has not always been my best friend. So yeah, there that and you know it, it goes into too much more detail here and everything else. I'm just kind of oh yeah highlighting some of the stuff uh, like animate object. Why the lightning? Yeah, <laughs> get your engine around. Yeah. Hey, hey, isn't that isn't that, isn't that, that one's actually that very time? useful? <laughs> it feels like we already talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there is a yeah. There's something funny about that though. You can ride lightning straight into a wall and commit suicide. So be careful where you come out on the other end. Yeah. No, the caster can ride lightning straight into a wall and instantly unalive himself. Yep. Uh, That's no way I'm gonna go out. <laughs> <laughs> This is gonna feel really awesome for the first like five seconds. It's really gonna suck. Yeah, there's the silver spear you were talking about earlier. Yeah. So for the to for casting outside of battle, it takes longer. You said correct. Yes. Okay. And that is because it takes. Uh, it's the equivalent of building up the energy instead of just having it there to ac immediately access it. There's the hydrums. So you've got like a battle stance, cloud walk, uh, crushing blow, flash step, <laughs> eyes of the Zark. Yeah, I forgot what that one does. Oh, yeah, that's a sniper. Uh, that's a sniper hardium. Yeah. Is there an illusion based one? Uh, I didn't think of one, but there could very well be. Yeah, because I, I would love to come down twice. I would <laughs> love to combine um, being a sword master with an illusionist at the same time. Oh God! I can think of some amazing, horrible things I can do. So you know, yeah, it's really not out. It's illusion. See, wobble, wobble, wobble. Oh, cool stab. Wait, your sword wasn't out. Yeah, well. Man, I thought I was going to cut you in half with that strike. I, I went a little too shallow. That's a now, shame. Now, I, <laughs> I do like this, that you can't, you know, cherry pick what you want. It's actually your roll on, you know, the sub the sun fruit with the species and then the elements. Yeah, and yeah you, you that, can either do actually, a uh, category roll or a straight up roll where you... Roll just straight but up, and, uh, yeah. How rare? So, how rare are these sun fruits? Uh, rare enough that not every character is supposed to have one, but there are thousands throughout the planet. Sorry, Shadow, you're out. You said I'm going to open the first anyway. Don't worry about it. <laughs> So do you want to explain the tributes? It doesn't look like these are normal uh, tributes. Uh, I was supposed to say attributes. Or attributes, I mean. Uh, the uh, what the uh, uh, these are our based... normal attributes here. No, so. they're they're based heavily off of palladium. IQ uh, IQ is obviously your intelligence. MC mental constitution. Uh, MP mental prowess. 
or no mental perception. No, no, that is mental prowess. It's either mental perception or mental prowess. I think it's mental perception, physical strength, uh, physical constitution, and mental awareness. Uh, physical awareness. Bleh. And speed. I, and luck. I, I keep forgetting about luck, but that's because that's an optional one. Yeah. So, yeah, it looks like it's mental perception, uh, physical strength, physical constitution, physical awareness, and then, of course, speed. Yep. And luck. So yeah, okay. Yeah, and each of them can grant bonuses if you um, have a high enough number. But this is where something like, hey, J uh, Jade, you still watching? Because this is the part where you're probably going to kick yourself in the butt when you found out, hey, or when you heard, uh, when you decided to have me make uh, characters for you when you found when you read this and it goes, it says if you uh, to roll your attributes, you start with 21, roll 3d6 and minus whatever number from your attribute, and that's your attribute number. Well, you get 21, you roll 3d6. So let's say I rolled an 18. So you would, uh, your attribute would be three. Fuck my life. <laughs> yeah, Jade, this is a game for you. This is a roll low. At least when it comes to that, you're going to be a rock star. It's all roll low. Well, yeah, he, he's going to be magnificent. -toe. Yes. Fuck. Can I get you to make my character? Because I can't roll low on principle. <laughs> His dice are made the characters. All right. You made the characters. Awesome. Yeah. So it's, uh, that's, I think that's the reason why Baron invited me. The main reason Baron invited me to the Table Breakers Discord is so I could put the characters there instead of putting them in regular Discord. So you guys are going to actually yeah. find them. Jesus. This is true. Oh my god! Yeah, that way they're all in one spot. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, exactly. I'm roll three one. I'm roll three d six. Ones, 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 ones. Don't you want higher the ones? No, I want ones. <laughs> what? Yeah, roll three. Got a three d six and forget the first two. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, artillery. I like that. There's a there's actual artillery weapons. Yeah, that's your shit's cannons. Guns. Wait, wait. Pistols. Pistols. I yep. could be a hammer, knife. I could be a that shoots people. Yes, I believe that is actually part of the weapon provisions you can have. Woohoo! Giggity, 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 boom. And of course, the general things. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I would suggest, and this is just a suggestion for you to write down for later, okay. is have a adventure like a do like a for like uh, I would say like a sailor's pack, which would cover you know, your your pirates and all that, and oh, uh, yeah, basically for for like equipment wise. Oh, uh, like uh, most. Uh, most most of the time we do like he, most of us will set up and go okay for for 15 gold pieces this is your out of your starting money this is you buy this this pack and then boom yes standard adventure gear i forgot uh, i forgot to mention that you actually have a starting equipment that you do get automatically you don't have to pay for it and some starting savings wait wait wait, wait. I, I you're missing something from this list i have yet to see What's that? There's no pitons. Where are, where is the rum? Hold on a second. He isn't in that section yet. Okay. Is edibles. There, is there tobacco? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I found the rum. Yes. <laughs> He's in the alcohol section. Okay. Let's rum. Damn it! Go up too fast. I want to see rum. 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 Mead, 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 alcohol, L. Damn. That's, the fine, that's the fine mead. <laughs> well, considering you need honey to make mead, I can understand why. Yeah, yeah that being that expensive makes sense. Tobacco. Tobacco, soap, wax. Glue. Now, see, I, I would say that that should be higher. Yeah, yeah. I, I changed that. 
I changed that in a later book. Okay. Well, well I'm book. just saying because 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 if bees what if if honey's that expensive, that means it'd be the kind of the equivalent for wax. That's a oh, no, okay, that's also per ounce, not per pound. Yeah. That's still some expensive. I mean, I get the honey being expensive. I get the meat being that expensive. Holy shit. The wax. Yeah. Yeah. Because you get the only place you can get the bees wax is from the bees where you get the, the honey and the. <laughs> well, unless you're a Shrek oh. fan. Yeah. <laughs> And just a little bit lower is an explanation to some of the items that are unique to this game. Okay, so or, and world asked compass, why honey is so expensive. World compass determines north north from south and east from west. Uh, so it's only got general navigation. Okay. An island compass detects uh, the magnetic pole of individual islands. Uh, which uh, will lead you to the closest slash strongest island magnetics. So actually, if you find a small island that's near a bunch of large islands, you could literally be hidden. Yep. Yeah. Milk bud is a plant that when boiled produces a substance that acts exactly like cow's milk. Okay. Mostly fed to cows. And there are cows in this game. Mm. And of course, the explanation I've already given about honey. Yeah. They sound angrier than hornets. <laughs> oh, no. Not the murder of hornets. Wasps, they have no purpose besides fucking your shit up. <laughs> and then they go that. and and then they go and recruit the ladybugs. And they go recruit the dragonflies. There's an actual game that has been out lately that keeps hitting my feed for the uh you're you're, you're building a a uh, uh a colony of bees basically and that you get attacked by the hornets or the wasps. Because wasps bring other assholes. <laughs> Just yes. This is really, really well laid out. Yeah. I definitely agree. The, the way he has this definitely laid out, uh, especially for kind of like a like a starter pack, which is basically like this. Yeah. Uh, this is exactly, you know, a quick, easy, you know, th th to me, this would be like the... Uh, I kind of like the the starter box set, but you yeah. say you know, this is basic this is what set. you get. Yeah, your basic set, and then when you you know your then you have your your additional rules that you would lay on top of the yeah. From that. I laid it out in the way that made the most sense to me. Could I? Can I multi class being a pirate paladin? Uh, yes, but you have to. Well, technically, you could now because you are at uh, second rank. But you have to wait till second rank, and you lose all. Um, Power. Uh, no. Uh, 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 domain of play. You, you, if you go multi class, you can't. Don't go to. Well, like one of the hangups with paladins, as I'm thinking about, is the divine factor about being a paladin, and you kind of remove that. So for the sun god, you remove that from the campaign you remove that from the situation so it's just kind of like huh what kind of doors have now been opened because of the not having to deal with the divine right versus well you still have to basically pray and do certain rituals every day to maintain your ability to cast hardiums in a lesser fraction lesser degree to the refractionist if you stop doing that your character will stop lo will lose his ability to be a right right to be a sun kid but there's no hard line, a uh, whole no hard alignment lines, is what I guess I'm saying. No, no, there is not. And I, I get, and in looking this over, I see no alignments whatsoever. Uh, I like this, no, just the four more. reactions. Now, I, I, 
my thing with alignment is, is I, I, I'm stealing this a little bit from Legion of Myth, but I was like this beforehand. Alignments can be just way too limiting compared to reality, and this is mostly meant, admittedly, this is mostly meant to be a cinematic game. But that whole, you you got to have the, the, this this hardcore line in the sand. It's like even the most noble person is Fifty Shades of Grey. There is no way of getting around that. So I just felt like a hard hard set alignment was just not something I wanted in my game. Hey, hey, hey. A set of reactions is closet. definitely good. What? You stay out of Bruce's closet. We don't talk about what you find in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't yet, but uh, I will eventually. I got pictures. Is Bruce even here? Let me hear. Oh, okay. You guys, you guys were like completely into it. That's That's awesome. No, this sounds fun. This really does. Yeah, this, this definitely sounds like this is going to be a fun time. So, uh, starting next week, uh, for three weeks, we are going to be. This is going to be uh, what we what we eat, sleep, and, and breathe here uh, on Table Breakers. So, definitely make sure you join us for the shenanigans. Shenanigans. Uh, so yeah, so we are getting toward that time. Uh, for the, the, the wrap up, so uh, TCG, what do you got coming up this week besides prepping for this game? Not much, I've had to cut back on the amount of videos I make because uh, I was starting to show the first signs of burnout and come uh, cutting back to video every other week has already done me some good. So, this week, nothing, but next week, I am going to be having a video of the Soviet Union in the Robotech universe. Ah, okay. Be interesting. Okay. Nato, what do you got coming up this week? Uh, tomorrow, I'm hopefully going to be reviewing the Ravenloft box set from the 1980s. I'll be doing a shadow chat on Saturday night. Just don't have a topic yet. And then all next week, I'll be doing more Ravenloft reviews. I'm going to try and uh, make it through all 20 or 30 Ravenloft books I have, plus some of the box sets until Halloween. Uh, just going to be a lot of Ravenloft reviews. I'll be doing some eBay videos because it is time for those folks who sell on eBay to clear out some clutter, get rid of some junk, make some cash, and uh, hopefully... Uh, teach people how to not get ripped off on eBay if they are going to be selling. And uh, that's about it for the next week. And then once October rolls around, we'll be doing a whole bunch of other Halloween crafts and projects, things like that. Okay. And uh, Bruce, what do you got coming up this weekend? Well, Friday night, if you uh, are not a subscriber to Janet from Another Planet, you get to see us go full bore into our hatred of shitty politicians, both sides of the aisle on that one. And uh, then we talk a little bit about rational things, but mainly about our hatred of shitty politicians and the media. Saturday, uh, right now it's kind of looking like I'm going to do some uh, rolling up of thief or skilled type characters for my campaign. And if I got some people mulling around on Saturday afternoon, I might pull in for a, hey, guys, here's your characters. Here's your here's your play test. We're going to fuck around for a bit. And uh, I think we're going to do that. So, yeah, so today, this is a free week. And then uh, Saturday night, of course, uh, the great and illustrious Chimerian, St. Rant of, uh, St. Kai of Rant, will be at the channel after 9 o'clock. Looking forward to that. And uh, then Sunday, I don't know what I'm doing Sunday yet. I know Sunday at 7 o'clock, I'll be hosting uh, Ice Pirates at the Discord channel. And anybody that wants to watch Futurama, be in there by uh, 4.30. So I'll be watching Futurama, and uh, we'll be discussing that here pretty soon. Uh, Monday's discussion with Janet will be all about the Ice Pirates. And I'm looking forward to this movie because there's some really cool things about the Ice Pirates. And if you want to really love the movie, forget about the last five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's me. 
Connell, what do you got coming up this weekend? Oh, this week. Tomorrow I'm going to be away from the ca uh, camera because uh, I will be playing. Uh, oh, right. Uh, I don't want to say heavy metal. What am I playing? I am playing. Jeez, uh, I'm playing a game over a place in Washington. What am I playing? Uh, not no Warhammer. Matter. Yeah, Warhammer Fantasy. Warhammer Fantasy. I keep wanting to say heavy metal, heavy metal fantasy. Like, no, that's not right. You know, I'll be playing Warhammer Fantasy in Washington um, Saturday. If Bruce will have have me, maybe I'll you know play test some something with him because that sounds fun as hell. And Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I know we tried to do this last week, but life being life, and I having to make a trip to Indiana, which ought. Uh, I will. We will be doing the. Jim Belushi and John Ritter's Real Men, where I think they miscast somebody and they should have just used Bill Murray because that's the way he was acting the entire movie. You know, I don't believe, I can't believe you don't like this movie because it is a perfect movie to showcase the comedy talent of Jim Belushi, the world's funniest living Belushi. How oh. dare you? I, just, I, I didn't say I didn't like the movie. I'm just saying Bill Murray would have been a better choice for that role because that's how he was acting the entire movie. Hi, I'm yeah, Bill Murray. Bill couldn't have pulled that off. Bill doesn't Bill, have Bill. that. Good. Bill couldn't have pulled it off. He's yeah. not He's not tough enough. He, I, he's, I he's all, he's all the, tough. The scene with the dominatrix in that movie that, that changed Jim Belushi's character for the rest of the film, that, that completely made him completely cut. After that, he, he I, mean, I, I love the scene with the loving his parents, his loving mom, and well, mom. His aunt. <laughs> yeah. So I, I there's a lot of surprises about this movie. I've never seen it before. I'm a big Jim Belushi fan. I liked him in uh, uh, there's a couple of movies he did in his early, you no know, late '80s that I really enjoyed. But what movie I want you to review, uh, review Bruce, is Shoot Him Up. If I can find a way to bring it to my channel, sometimes it, 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 listen. It, it, it if if we mention it, I'm sure it will happen. But uh, I gotta I gotta play Kate Janet. Uh, November. I will love this movie. I know she movie. will. I know. But follow me for just a second. Uh, not Norman Reedus, but the other Boondock Saint. What's his name? Uh, uh, uh Peter Saint Peter. I don't know. Sean. Murphy, Neil Patrick Flannery. Yes, I was getting there. Yeah, well, the, the entire month of November, I'll be we'll be reviewing movies of him because Janet's got a thing for him. God, he and did not. Like, hey, he's a really nice guy. I've worked with him on sets before. He's so cool. And I'm like, do you really gush about this guy? She's like, yes. And I'm like, fine. November's it. I don't want to fucking have to deal with one fucking turkey fucking movie. All right, yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> I, just, I, yeah. You, listen, I love Thanksgiving for what it is on a patriotic and spiritual basis. I think giving thanks is something that a lot many people have forgotten the art of, but I cannot stand turkey. I worked at a miserable shithole called Kroger's in East Peoria, which okay. they later fired me, and I <laughs> learned <laughs> to hate turkey. Like, turkey is like the worst fucking animal for food consumption in the world. It's dry as shit. You have to have three gallons of gravy to make it go down well. You have to have another hey. gallon of milk to wash that and take a nice shit afterwards. Yeah, Sean Patrick Flannery, amazing guy. But I don't want to fucking have to look at one fucking turkey in November that I should not have to. If I go I out in public, it's my fault because I went out in public and, oh, God, there's a million fucking turkeys at HEB. I fucking hate turkeys. I, I can teach you how Damn to make turkey amazing. actually not the dry. Um, but I wanted to ask you a question there, Bruce. Have you done Fight Club or Pulp Fiction yet? Either of the, neither of those movies yet. Cool. I didn't want to miss that. Okay, Pulp Fiction. Like the Dune movie we did on Monday, like the first hour of it, I was like fatigued and I was sucking on coffee beans and then the coffee beans hit. And like after hour two and three, like, I, I yeah, three hours of fucking jacking off basically to that movie. I fucking love the movie Dune, and the, the, the theatrical version of the movie 
is like a 71 for me, okay? It's it's very watchable. The score is amazing. There's some cool stuff in it. But the Spice Diver edit, if you've not seen the Spice Diver edit of Dune, it's a three-hour version with a lot of the deleted scenes restored. Uh, I mean, like, you see his first wife and her kids that he gets after a knife fight that was never in the theatrical version. You get a lot of minutes added to the film with a lot of good context. There is a lot of narration because this is a book ba- movie based on Dune. And otherwise, it'd be a six-hour film, which I was happy to... Uh, let's go for a six-hour film. Fuck, uh, what was her name? Sean Young did a video of uh, on a Super 8 of her experience in Mexico. And it chronicles David Lynch's hell he went through because Dino De Laurentiis fucked up the entire movie with all of his stupid ideas and two hours and 17-minute mandate. But Sean Young put this film on YouTube. So if you guys like Dune and you love Sean Young, she's got a channel. She's got a channel with her video from Dune. And you can watch the filming process. It's like, it's substantial. It's like a half hour to an hour long. And she says, this movie, we filmed like four hours of it. And even Pat Stewart was saying, this would have been a great movie if we would have gotten everything on camera into the movie. Because they filmed like four hours of it. But, man, the we got what we got. Sorry. The version that me and uh, Shadow did early on, man, that movie, I was about ready to turn it off right when they uh, hopped on a ship using a traveler. It, that thing was just disgusting. I'm sorry. I don't mind. Yep, I'm done, or I need more beer. One of the two. You don't understand the Navigator, do you? I it, it, it felt me. It made me feel dirty. Oh, so you're not the only one that's the So you're hmm. so you weren't I, the only. Sorry, my, the fact that the a movie buddy of mine that, literally describes the nav. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. Go I, on. Okay. Uh, is it? It's a fact that a buddy of mine literally describes the Navigator as a uh, diseased vagina. That's kind of what I called it. <laughs> uh, hey, so the, the, uh, all I have to say is before you do Step those over. two movies that 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 Shadow said, I am still awaiting you guys to do the original Gone in sixty seconds. Oh God, yeah. Not the not the the Nick Cage redo, yeah. Well, the well, that was, original. That was still pretty okay. The Nick Cage version's all right. No, no. Hold on. When I say all right, I mean it's highly watchable by Gen X. The original Gone in sixty seconds is a classic. The only movie Amazing. that measures up to it and actually exceeds it numerous times is the Blues Brothers. I hate Illinois Nazis. But so, but no the I, I'm sorry the entire last like 45 minutes of the movie is nothing but a car chase, and I'm and at the end of it you you're so sad because of the condition of that Shelby. Oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. It, it, it will make agreed you agreed completely in agreement. I'm uh, just that. reading. I have, I'm trying to find a way to fit it into our schedule, but shoot 'em up is such a great. It's a family film. I mean, I might, I might pick that as my Christmas special, how much of a family film that is. I got a family film for you. <laughs> the Expendables. Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> oh, God, no. That's, watch The Expendables with your son. Oh, God, no. That's a, that's a hell of a bonding moment. No, He's no. My Christmas, my Christmas pick this year is going to be Violent Nights. It's the movie of last year that brought Christmas back into my heart. Tell you what, after I get done watching Krampus, I'll watch Violet Night, but I gotta watch Krampus first. I get it. Uh, no, no, no. The reason why is because I just watched The Gate two weeks ago. Yeah. And The Gate is like how to do baby's first horror, which is good. It's good for baby's first horror. It has some really good effects in it. The guy that stands up and he falls down, a bunch of little dudes walk from his corpse. That was really awesome. There's some really cool special effects in it. We're gonna do The Gate Probably, I, I want to do that in October, not this year, maybe next year. Gate, the one that came out in the 80s? 86. I kind of remember that movie. That was a weird-ass movie. It is. Hell, they have it for Bruce, free on, on the tubes. This is, 
<laughs> I'm sorry. This comment right here is something that you would say. Because <laughs> I did watch Basic Instinct with my father on the opposite side of the room, and I didn't know where his hands were. Uh, wait, wait. You you said you were at the Beetlejuice musical. I was. I wanted to go, but Bobert would not call me. <laughs> I am so fucking heartbroken. My wife and I, we didn't know what to do. Like I'm like I, Bobert. Bobert's going to the musical without me. Ah, I want to go with that Bobert. Is, that <laughs> musical was just a hands-on experience. I know. I mean, this is. This, Never believe anybody when they say I'm in politics and I play Miss Morals because this this is the exhibit A. All right, here we go. Here we go. What the the, the guys with three strokes here in the Congress? What was it? Mc, uh, McDonnell. You had uh, you, you had McDonald that just had a stroke. Fetterman just had a stroke, and Bobert had her strokes on camera. <laughs> so okay, and we'll go ahead and call it there, folks. Uh, <laughs> Make sure to get your boosters, like, share, and subscribe to all of these very fine creators. Make sure you do that. The Christmas season is coming, so don't be breathing on Grandma. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week with uh, with uh, CTG's game, and we will catch you next time. Bye, everybody. That's 